Hello and welcome to Blooming Curious, the podcast that's all about nurturing that natural curiosity in our earliest kids and students. I'm Edwina, your host from the Ed's Lessons blog, a passionate advocate for play and inquiry, and on a mission to keep children curious and questioning. The days of talk and chalk are over. We're diving into the world of integrated, inquiry and nature-based learning and exploring those strategies that create lifelong learners. So if you're a classroom or homeschool educator or even a curious parent, then this is the place for you. Today's episode is especially for the parents out there. The holidays are here and you're probably wondering how you're going to keep those kids occupied for the next month or so. And to try to keep them off technology as much as possible, I've got 24 fun activities for you to develop your kids' curiosity, even while they're on holiday. So my top tip number one is to switch off and put away the devices. Oh my goodness, that could be a big one. Might be some screaming and shouting, but hey, if you're prepared to just stick with it and listen to my 24 activities, you might just be surprised. So stick them off, switch them off, put them away, do whatever you need to do, lock them up in a cupboard. And today, or today's activity really, is to get kids into the car and visit your local library or bookshop and encourage your children to buy or borrow a picture book or a non-fiction book and topic that interests them. You know, dinosaurs, insects, animals, these are usually big hits with kids. And books from National Geographic are usually a firm favourite and they certainly have been with my own children when they were young and even with my students. The second tip I have um, is to go on a nature walk and pay attention to the wildlife you encounter. Now this is not only just, you know, good for kids, but it's good for you too. So get out the house, no matter what the weather, if it's really hot like here in Australia is right now, maybe go early in the morning or later in the afternoon Um, And be alert and draw your children's attention to even the smallest creatures. Follow an ant trail or stay to look at a bird and its features or whatever you find. Your observation skills will be key. If you start asking questions, you're starting to encourage your kids to ask questions of their own. You can download a list of my open-ended questions in my free e-guide, which I'll link in the show notes. Plant a garden together is number three. Investigate potential vegetables or plants you can grow in your garden and encourage your child to observe the plant growth and record the changes in a nature journal. In the PDF that I will include in the show notes, I actually have put a link there to um, a YouTube video of how to make your very own nature journal. So be sure to check check that out and go to the go to the um, website where you can download that free PDF. Number four would be to create a reading nook and we somewhere that you can encourage a device free reading by creating a cozy reading nook. You know, fill it with pillows and blankets and even fairy lights to make it inviting. And take turns reading your favorite stories to each other. You know, we always underestimate um, reading. But if I've noticed that if you give kids a really interesting, cozy place where they can just be by themselves and often just have an opportunity to chill out, they actually really appreciate that, especially when things are really busy during the holidays and there might be some, you know, chaos and everybody's running around. Give kids a space where they can just go and chill out and be quiet and stick a little basket there full of their favorite books and, you know, maybe perhaps some soft toys and, as I said, fairy lights to make it a beautiful, magical place for chilling out and reading. Number five is to prepare some easy picnic food together and then just have a picnic in your garden. Number six, go on a bug hunt. Look under the rocks and stones and flower pots in your garden. And then you can draw and write about the creatures in the nature journal. Number seven, what about dress up? Encourage children to play dress up and act out different roles. And you know what? You don't have to go and buy expensive dress up clothes. You just Give them old shirts and dresses and hats and bags and visit op shops and second-hand shops. Kids love old hats especially. Number eight, when last have you played a board game? Children love board games. Anything that encourages them to think critically. 
Monopoly, drafts, Chinese checkers, chess if they're old enough, even dominoes. Kids love games. So that's a, and it's a great opportunity to encourage, you know, being a good sport and not allowing them to win just because they're kids. So, you know, and then you can also um, encourage them to, to be good losers as well. Number nine, go to a local park and let the children run and climb and play freely. You know, so often we as parents and even educators forget and we want to protect our children and so we always want to tell them to be careful and we want to tell them what to do. Do you know what? Kids need freedom. They need an opportunity to take risks. They need an opportunity to just do their own thing. And this type of free play where you're not descriptive is really helpful to children, not only for their muscle tone and their gross motor skills, but it's also important for fine motor skills, not to mention the sheer happiness that comes from free play. And free play also teaches independence and problem solving. So really resist the urge to solve the children's problems. Allow them to have a go on their own. Number 10, go for a long walk along a creek, river or the beach if you live there. Investigate the wildlife that live on the edges. Take a camera and get children to take close-up shots of what they see. And then you can have a whole you know, investigation into macro photography and show them how to take a really close-up picture. And that really can cause some or trigger some interesting conversations. Number 11, encourage children to build a fort indoors using blankets and pillows. And once it's built, let them play and imagine. You know, when we lived in the Middle East, it was so hot outside. We're talking 48 degrees Celsius in summer. Kids couldn't play outside. And at that point, you just have to sometimes let it go. Forget about the house and being tidy all the time. Give them the blankets and the pillows. You know, leave it, leave it up for a few days. They will build their own thing. You know, give them some torches. Again, books, pillows, soft toys, whatever they need to make it a magical experience for them. It's not going to stay there forever, maybe a few days, a week at most, and then you can take it down. And who cares if it's a little bit of a mess? This is all about encouraging an amazing, imaginative childhood, not just about always being super neat and tidy. Twelve, gather some recycled materials like empty boxes and packaging and let kids create an animal sculpture or a monster. And remember, you'll need lots of tape, and I mean lots of tape. And again, encourage that independence. Don't solve the problems for them. You know, if you fix things for kids, the message you're giving them is, you can't do it. I can do it better than you. So it's not always about what the thing looks like. It's the process. So allow them to make and glue and tape just however they want and give them that wonderful sense of satisfaction of creating something on their own. Number 13, get your favorite cake or cupcake recipe and make a delicious treat together. And, you know, pay attention to the changes in the ingredients when they're mixed and then baked, which is an amazing experience. It's, you know, baking and cooking with kids is really a hands-on science experiment right there in your very own kitchen. You know, and make them aware of changes with your questioning. Hey, what's happening to this now that we're adding a liquid? Do you see how it changes? I wonder what's going to happen when we add the eggs. Just think about some questions that you can ask just to get them thinking. It doesn't have to be, you know, they don't have to feel like you're, you're having a big lesson. It's just normal part of their everyday learning and everyday life. And before 14, how about taking a rug outside and just laying down and looking at the clouds. Children can imagine they're on a cloud and they can make up a story about their adventures. Or how about reading Eric Carle's Little Cloud? It's really a you know, a great favourite with kids, especially for the younger children. And older kids can then go and have a look at books that you know are non-fiction and talk about different clouds. And and if you can't lie outside in the, during the day and look at clouds, well, then do it at night and look at the stars instead. Number 15, get a magnifying glass and encourage children to look closely at objects around your house or garden. This is going to keep them busy for quite a time. Encourage them then to draw and paint what they see. Number 16 follows really on, and that is to get out the paints and paint a picture. 
perhaps a still life with plants or fruit or find some examples of still lives in a book or even better find inspiration by visiting an art gallery. Another option is simply just to allow your kids to paint and make whatever marks they like on a piece of paper using watercolours. You know those paper rolls you get from Ikea are perfect for this. And also I just want to say You will be surprised at how many kids I have taught that tell me they don't paint at home because their mum doesn't want them to make a mess. Guys, just get a plastic sheet or plastic tarp or, I don't know, an old garbage bag. Put it out there, allow the kids to paint and create and mess and afterwards just wash it down and wipe it down and there's really no harm done and you've encouraged kids to be creative. You know, you can't make an omelette without breaking some eggs. And so you also can't be creative without getting messy. Number 17 is get out those blocks or Lego and get your kids being creative, building a structure. And you know, it's also really important for kids to also not always just be doing busy, busy, busy things and running around. Sitting quietly, stacking, building and creating is a great way to encourage patience and perseverance and creativity and problem solving. So get out those blocks. Number 18, have you got any old socks lying around at home? Well, they make great sock puppets. Just go onto YouTube and check out um, a tutorial on how to make a sock puppet. I remember doing this with my boys when they were little, and they absolutely loved it. And actually, I've still got some of those sock puppets in a tub. You know, maybe I'll bring them out one day. Um, when there's other little children running around. But it's such a great activity for kids. Not only are they learning to be creative and not only are they learning how to perhaps glue or sew very simply, but it's a really great way to get that critical thinking going and problem solving and just be creative and having fun. And it's something different. Number 19 is go on a discovery walk. You know when you go for a walk, right? Kids always inevitably, they'll pick up something, a feather, a stick, a stone. It's just how we are. It's just human nature. Well, take a little bag with so that your child can collect these interesting natural objects and bring them home. And then all those feathers and leaves and rocks or seed pods or flowers or whatever they find you can then do number 20, which is use all these natural objects and classify them. Group them according to their shape, their color, their texture. This is great for developing critical thinking. Number 21 is encourage your children to come up with as many questions about a found object as possible. Perhaps make a list of questions that they can come up with. And this is great, again, to stimulate that critical thinking that they're going to need throughout their lives. Because you don't want kids to just be sitting there like lumps. You want them to actually think and wonder. And so encouraging them to come up with questions is amazing. And you know what? It's a difficult thing to do, especially if it's not something they're used to. So encourage questioning. And you can do this by modeling and you always asking questions yourselves. And number 22 is to make a nature journal to document your finds and discoveries. And in the PDF that you will find in the show notes, there's a great little video clip of how to make your own paper bag journal. So have a look at that. Number 23, collect some sticks and come up with as many creative ways as you can with a stick. Allow your kids to decorate them by winding twine around them. You know, perhaps you can even attach some of those nature objects that you found like feathers or flowers or whatever and you know it can become a fairy wand or a talking stick or whatever you want and the last one lucky last is to set up an obstacle course and challenge your kids to see how quickly they can complete it now here's a way that your kids can actually get active if you if you're indoors and you can't get outside use your furniture use lots of cushions and pillows again I saw some great examples of this Um, on social media especially during COVID if you just google I guess um, homemade obstacle courses for kids I'm sure you'll find something there 
And so that's it, my list of 24 fun things you can do for with your kids these holidays. So thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed um, this episode. And if you did, make sure to click that subscribe button wherever you're listening. And if anything I've said today resonates with you or you think that someone else might find it useful, then please share it and consider leaving a review which will really help me grow the show. So thanks so much and be sure to visit me at bloomingcurious.com and listen out for our next episode next Tuesday. And remember, curiosity isn't just a trait, it's a superpower. So until next time, stay blooming curious.